to scene one of Raisin in the Sun picks up later the same day. Ruth Younger is ironing. Benita emerges from her bedroom in full Nigerian costume, puts on a record, and starts to sing and dance to a Nigerian folk song. Walter enters drunk. He watches distastefully at first, then leaps onto the table to deliver a dramatic monologue, imagining himself as an African warrior and chief. As Benita gets caught up with him, interjecting an African war cry, Walter's monologue shifts from pure comedy to unexpected majesty and the sentiment of black brotherhood. This sentiment is soundly rejected by George Murchison, Benita's wealthy suitor, and the moment ends. Benita shocks Ruth and George when she reveals her natural, unstraightened hair. She calls them assimilationist Negroes, but George mocks her tendency to lecture about her African heritage. Walter mentions he has big business plans he'd like to talk over with George's father. George dismisses him. So Walter insults George's education, saying it won't lead to any real power in the world. Walter doesn't understand why George isn't as bitter as he is. Ain't you bitter, man? Ain't you just about had it? Man, I'm a volcano. Ruth later admits that they're at a low point in their marriage. She says she wants to be close to Walter and adds gently that their life doesn't have to be this way. Mama returns, but she won't say where she's been. When Travis comes home late, Mama calls him over to tell him she bought a house, says he should thank his grandfather for it and that one day it will be his. Ruth is thrilled by the news, but Walter says nothing. Mama describes the house and then tells them it's in Clybourne Park, a white neighborhood. Walter says, so that's the peace and comfort you went out and bought for us today? Mama replies, it was the nicest place for the least amount of money. After a moment, Ruth yells, hallelujah, goodbye misery. Mama pleads with Walter to understand what she's done. Walter says, you the head of this family, you run our lives like you want to. So you butchered up a dream of mine, you who always talking about your children's dreams. This scene starts with a fantasy of dignity and power for Walter and ends with his perceived emasculation. He asserts himself in his mind as a warrior, but then George dismisses him as a businessman and Mama replaces him as head of the family. For Walter, who doesn't feel like a man financially, the Nigerian fantasy is empowering. Beneath is also empowered by the music the transformation of her hair, and a new African identity. George Murchison embodies here many aspects of dominant white culture, representing the American world the youngers can't gain access to and the one Benita will ultimately reject. Despite Walter's posturing, Mama asserts the most authority in this scene, making a financial decision for the family and setting up a legacy for her grandson. The dangerous reality of her real estate investment will loom over the play's final curtain.